Hello, my friends. Uh, welcome back after a big break. And, uh, you know, I do try to uh, kind of keep it up, but uh, things interfere and uh, for which I do apologize, but we'll continue this series. I'm very excited to uh, get this one out despite very uh, uh, many uh, external events. And today we'll, we'll, we'll not just talk, we'll come back to the uh, critical thinking series. Um, today we'll talk about personality types. It's a subject that's dear to my heart, and that's because I, I, because we deal with people every day. But you know, we try to categorize them. Science is actually quite, you know, uh, good at categorizing things. It's not the only thing it does, but uh, humans are no exception, and we need to try to categorize them. Sometimes trying to maybe put them in neat boxes, which is not very easy. But I think uh, this basically one of the first. Well, not one of the first, but many things that people were attempting over a millennia, way before the psychology was invented. Yeah. So way before the psychology was invented, people were talking about the temperaments. They're trying to understand and predict human behavior. Why is it some people are more uh, quiet and some people more active? How to explain it in, in some sort of scientific way? Now, uh, you could call it throughout the psychological theory. And I think uh, it was the Greek physician Hippocrates who came first uh, up with it. And then it was continued by a Roman physician Galen. But that's through all of medieval times, pretty much way into the 18th century or so. Uh, when people talked about these four temperaments, saying that the four fundamental personality types sanguine, uh, choleric, melancholic, and phlegmatic uh, related some mixtures of some fluids inside a uh, person. Yeah, and uh, humor, as they call it, some, some four bodily fluids, when they kind of move, move and mix, affect human personality and behavior. Obviously, there's not such a thing, uh, but the personality types as described now is actually very, very similar uh, uh, wording. Now, it's very, very much different in terms of description, but you know, uh, it was obvious that somebody who is phlegmatic and melancholic is something which is very akin to interpersion, and somebody which is sanguine and choleric, it's very much um, extroversion. And the uh, choleric types, were recognized as some sort of a, you know, it's very active dominant types. And then the sanguinic such as kind of a, uh, something which is somebody who's very extrovert. And that turns into colors. I'm not sure how the colors exactly uh, relate to uh, the colors of the body, bodily fluids, but I think there is some uh, link now. Uh, obviously, uh, I think you would say, you've probably seen this if you work in some more companies, uh, uh, that kind of a very simplified picture of four uh, personality types. Uh, that comes directly from, that comes directly from Hippocrates and Galen. No change here. Now, uh, Jung, Jung, has developed it way further, which we will then talk about a little bit later. Jungian types of personality are mm -hmm. um, much more developed, uh, but I guess this is the uh, simplified version. And as simplified as it is, not very different from what was before. Now, uh, you'd say, how do you divide? That's very similar. So, you know, the colors are different. So on top, something the people who are extroverted and you get colors of fiery red or yellow you know some and these are the extrovert types and then at the bottom is the you call it introverted types yeah. and then they are um, blue and green and so you would say it's actually quite a direct link there's a book called uh, you know surrounded by idiots and that also describes the same personality types in, in colors yeah. Uh, somebody who is uh, red, you know, no surprise, red, you know, red like a bull, and somebody who has 
full on energy, a direct communicator, very blunt, that says it, choleric, choleric, no term, no change really. Somebody who is uh, uh, sort of out there, enjoys spotlight, uh, you know, uh, uh, life of the party is a sanguinic. And then uh, at the bottom, you know, somebody who is analytically, uh, very, very analytical and stickler for rules, is a compliant type. And, you know, like the name for it now could be uh, called melancholic, although this one in particular probably doesn't really agree as much. And then the, the phlegmatics, the stables are the ones who are loyal team players and uh, they have calm and caring energy and, and, and their supporters. And they kind of sub subdivide people in different bits and pieces. The, the negatives of all those types are shown at the bottom. You know, so somebody who is red, be very powerful, but also could be quite aggressive and controlling. And the book actually describes how to deal with these various personalities and, you know, uh, great. Now, that's, that's all great. It's a great book. It's a great read. I recommend it to uh, everyone. Um, as I said, I think it's called um, Surrounded by Idiots, and it shows these four pictures four colors um, in the, at the front. Now, of course, these are gross simplifications and more than that, that they're gross simplification. I think they are uh, not really responding to kind of a, a more um, uh, details or of more uh, nuance. And that's why people continue to invent more things because, you know, obviously, you know, I can say I'm probably many of these things. And in, in some places I'm one and other places I'm the other. Uh, now, Jung's developed this much further because he has uh, talked about many other uh, routes, how to propose and in, uh, not just these four humors. And I think he is the one that probably studied the human nature, uh, human condition, condition the most. And he was, you know, trying to categorize personalities in and, and, and much more rigorous way. And it's basically got in sort of primary types of psychological function. And he basically got, you know, people separated in that kind of a, uh, four preferences. You would say that there's a, a you could call it a rational function, which is kind of uh, thinking and feeling. Uh, part uh, so and uh, then the uh, irrational and perceiving functions like the um, sensation and intuition and then he also discloses this is kind of how we make decisions um, you know we're basically um, rational when we're thinking less so on the feeling and when we gather information we're more sensing yeah we sense the information and then a uh, more irrational part is when we say into it and now how we're energized that's not really related to it it's not uh, it's all about whether we uh, uh, and, and I think that's a common misconception about extroverts and introverts extroverts are the ones who are loud and introverts are quiet and shy not necessarily I'm probably an introvert, but I'm not necessarily shy. And that's all about where do you get your energy from? If you wake up in the morning and you are uh, full of energy, but as you meet with people going through the day, your energy is drained when you meet with them and you really long for the uh, time alone, you're probably an introvert, you know, or thereabout. And then if, on the other hand, you are actually charged up by talking to people, working with them and, you know, uh, fully unintegrated with them, you are an extrovert. And then in, uh, that's the same way of how I approach life, you know. So if you uh, approach life in a quiet manner, you're probably an extrovert, uh, sorry, an introvert and, and vice versa. So, you know, they can call it kind of four function and eight types. And... Um, if you look at the uh, uh, the acronyms here, so E I uh, S I for intuition, and then they change this for N actually, and T F. 
this is exactly where what people done later on uh, Myers Briggs test has created. So they took the Jung's uh, categorization of primary psychological function um, and they sort of applied it to separated people in, into neat little boxes. And actually that's probably not Jung's fault. He hasn't really been trying to apply it for business. But when you apply it for a business and human, you know, um, sources departments and uh, in, in kind of uh, categorizing people, especially in the past, not so much now. And then, um, uh, you know, just for us, trying to kind of put ourselves in little, little boxes. This is a great fun. Like, so you go back to say, you know, how are we do energize, introversion, extroversion? How do we uh, collect information? We do it through intuition. That's the end. Uh, and then sensing when, you know, people are, you know, more realistic than intuition based. Yeah? And how do we make decisions? You take it on maybe on a thinking, when you logically and make decisions and then feeling when you have F. And so these are also colored by these same colors as in humors, if you remember. So then, you know, decision makers here, blue, you know, uh, the, the people who kind of into it, you know, the information bit is, is, uh, is uh, yellow, the energy bit is red, you know, and then this kind of judging versus perceiving here. So, Perce uh, perceiving is uh, uh, more spontaneous and judging are kind of liking rule. Now, how these were made, as I said, I think um, Myers and Briggs is the pair of mother and daughter psychologists uh, who kind of adapted it, worked it basically Jungian types into these subtypes. And so they said, okay, you know, four by four equal uh, 16. So there are 16 possible types and you can, go online and take a test and you will see all of these things very, very uh, common to, to, to see them. Yeah. So, you know, various online tests, uh, you know, I've taken through many, we've done a lot of these tests in, in, in my time in companies. They're great fun. Yeah. They're great fun. Um, and they also kind of uh, put people into little boxes. So I watched a lot of uh, online um videos about them and they're kind of fun say oh yeah well i'm an istj you know practical leader i am i think i was uh isfp at one point now isfj at another point the other thing is about them uh you know you have to answer honestly and you have to be able to uh be predictive you know so it depends on you and then I think if you answer things here and there, especially if you're in a, in a kind of a, a borderline state, I think you will find that uh, the, the answers vary quite a bit. So uh, there is actually a, a study online on towards how most common Myers-Briggs personalities types are. The most common type uh, here, and I'm not going to read them all like that. There's a lot of them, and they're kind of, you know, uh, similar descriptions, you know. But uh, generally, uh, there is actually a subdivision. And subdivision is such that although the most common type here is the uh, ISFG, which stands for intuiting sorry, introvert, um, uh, sensing, feeling, and judging. And it's got kind of this warm, considered, gentle, responsible, pragmatic, thorough, developed caretaker, and helpful to others. They, you know, that's most common human type, great. And uh, that is uh, also the first uh, female human type, although interestingly, it's only the fourth for males. So there's a quite quite a bit of dichotomy here, interestingly, but the, clearly there is a separation in, 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 in anyway. So, but in totality, that's probably the most um, uh, human type. Then the next one down is the second one on female again. And uh, that is ESFG, which is also friendly. It's basically the uh, same ISFG, but just the next 
um, extrovert part of it. Yeah, but it's also very helpful. So very interesting that the human, so when they kind of categorize themselves in these categories, I forget about the crown truthing that when people categorize themselves, either males and females, and then I forgot the third one, which is the ISTJ, which is the most common for males, and that's responsible, sincere, analytical, hardworking. So all of them either either helpful or um, uh, pragmatic. Uh, sorry, helpful or hardworking. Uh, they're all pragmatic, ground sort of uh, um, down to the ground people. So, and that is. You know, be surprised, don't be surprised if you can count them, count them all. All of them are actually uh, sensing, um, so rather than perceiving. And generally, if you take like sensing, perceiving nature, is that most of the people are very much uh, on the sensing part rather than kind of abstract thinkers and perceivers. You know, 73% of people. And uh, in that kind of uh, very kind of reliable people, you'll end up with the majority of these population. I think it's about 40, 40, 50, 40 percent or so. So there's not many disagreeable people, and then there's less of this kind of a red type uh, people as you would expect. And, uh, you know, there are some really uncommon types, I think. Uh, you would find that intuition is less common. So the intuition and uh, perceiving is less common. And, um, you know, introverts, extroverts are about equal from both males and females. Um, there is actually a bit separation on thinking versus feeding, which I'm not gonna get into, but that's, that's what it is. But generally there's, to be honest, very interesting that probably 40% people are thinking about feeling. And, you know, more people judge than perceive as I said, but, what I'm going to say to this, right, that's self-report. That's what people respond to these. But it's really nice to put yourself in little boxes. And this is actually quite interesting how it sort of uh, collides because people do like to put themselves in boxes and say, hey, I am an ISTJ. How about you? Well, I'm ISTP. I just took a test. Oh, wow, it's interesting. Now, when you start categorizing things, let's say, well, you know, females are, you know, doing this, males are doing that. Suddenly, this is all political and people don't like it. And, uh, well, you know, it's kind of complicated. In truth, everything in, the world, in this life exists as, uh, on a spectrum. It doesn't exist on, it's a continuum. It doesn't exist on um, some sort of a neat box that you can put in, put yourself in. So this is very helpful again, uh, to kind of, uh, for people to analyze themselves, how exactly these tie to human personalities and behaviors is very, um, uh, very, very hard to say. I think more and more times I've read that the studies kind of really disprove MBTI and basically this is kind of falling out of use uh, amongst the community. Now, I still expect that uh, amongst the lay people that the people that, you know, uh, that, that uses for fun, this is actually quite an interesting tool and people will continue to use them. Not sure if the human departments will continue to use them for anything. But now much more controversial but probably more uh, truth scientifically uh, is the you know big five personality trait, and that model was developed uh, using much more rigorous academic approach. I think it was defined by lots of researchers in 1960s, kind of who used uh, factor analysis of verbal behavior. They basically just put people on the spectrum of every possible behavior, and then started to grade how this works. I mean, it also comes to Jung. I mean, I think all of this comes to Carl Jung, but uh, in a different way. And they reduced this list of descriptors to maybe uh, uh, five, ten, uh, 10 of them, and then used uh, factor analysis to group the remaining traits, yeah? Uh, to order kind of come up to the underlying factors of behavior. Um, so it was done a little bit more kind of experimental psychological way rather than this my, my bricks test, which is 
pretty much uh, from uh, top down. So this is a little bit more kind of uh, experimental. And what they find that the five key traits of human behavior is are these. So it's openness. It's an openness to experience, or the opposite of that is close, closeness to experience. Conscientiousness, so basically how uh, honest and reliable you are uh, to do something. And then the extroversion is very much similar to the other introversion, extroversion is pretty remaining from the other traits. And then the agreeableness, you know, how agreeable or disagreeable are you? Um, and then the other one, which is very different, is called uh, a neuroticism. I think different that it actually comes from Jung, but it wasn't really one of his types. And I think this is actually a key one because it introduces, well, together with extroversion, it introduces some of the underlying causes of your behavior. And so if you, uh, people are called an ocean, right? So that's basically openness, uh, conscientiousness, uh, extroversion, uh, agreeableness, and uh, neuroticism, so ocean. And all of these are continuum. This is kind of a nice picture where this is all continuum. So if you're an open person, you have, I mean, it's all about openness to, you know, how your imagination is, you know, feelings and actions and ideas that are influenced you. Are you very inventive? And you know, curious, you know, sometimes people downgrade things like the, uh, uh, the closedness, because closedness doesn't seem nice, but actually this means that you're more consistent and cautious and you uh, stick to the rules better because the open to, uh, you know, open people probably disregard the rules more, you know, and they kind of don't see themselves as, you know, bound by them and you know and i think uh, people who are more consistent cautious and closed are better serve in say law enforcement right and uh better to 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 serve in you know as an accountant you don't want to know you know an accountant open to uh um innovation so uh, you find out the probably majority of the people are on the right but it's hard to say. I don't have the data unlike the previous MBTI examples. Um, then you go to the conscientiousness. I think, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, not being a native English speaker. Um, now on the, on the left of it, you're very efficient and organized. That's again, best accountant. Again, it's accounting here. And then on the right, and that's also, you know, but you know, that kind of hardworking, dependable and organized. And on the left, it makes you, um, you know, less self-disciplined, uh, you're impulsive, careless and disorganized. That's your kind of extrovert open type, you know, all that stuff, easy going, careless, but you know, you could be not, you know, that's a, it's really a, probably a great trait to be, a, uh with together with the openness it's kind of a great trait for inventor but not great trait for somebody who wants to kind of finish things and get them to fruition so and uh, something like you know people really look for conscientiousness uh you know in in their employees you know uh, and if you're an artist hey different now an extraversion introversion there's not much we can add to what's already been said um i think it's about 50 50 in people i i, I think it's uh, not much you can say about that then agreeableness that's and then you trade them just let's spend a little bit more time on it so um on the left uh, here uh there you're kind of uh, friendly and compassionate uh you're helpful trusting empathetic remember your green type yeah that's what probably matches a little bit to this one yeah but um really uh you you know a uh, very positive thing majority of people are saying unagreeable i'm not going to specify by gender i don't want to attract uh, uh you know, probation or uh, but it, you know it, it majority of people think definitely you know most females and both males most of the males but there are some people who are 
uh, very high on disagreeableness. And they're critical, uncooperative, suspicious, and a lot of red types are going to be like that. Yeah. And they will disagree and they will challenge. And you know, now come back to the critical thinking. I think we'll, we'll just we'll deal with that later. But I think you know that's a very important one. Yeah. And then again, neuroticism is uh, that's actually innate trait related to you know how we are wired. And yeah. I think to me, neuroticism, agreeableness, and extroversion are probably related to how we are wired and maybe others uh, a little bit more built in during the early childhood but you know it's just my opinion i am not a psychologist to kind of say that exactly you know, um, now uh, this kind of if you're low neuroticism you're calm and even tempered and quite secure you wither the storm and if you're high you're anxious and happy and prone to negative emotions and you know, I don't have the uh, specification how many people are on on that. I suspect probably half and half and a half on this one. Uh, again, probably more uh, females and male. Uh, but actually, you know, I am probably high on neuroticism. So, you know, a lot of males as well. You know, hey, it's tough, but life. You know, I you know, I didn't really ask to be born. Uh, higher neuroticism but i think so what what uh this kind of ocean example shows is that um i think we're on more on a continuum and these five traits when described together a better uh human personality descriptors than mbti tests um and then coming back to the critical thinking you know we you know we'd like to be separated from our personalities but it's not possible and I think if you look at this, uh, I would say that the people who are uh, more open, uh, better critical thinkers, the people who are rather than less, the people who are conscientiousness more, uh, a little bit more organized in their thinking, uh, better critical thinkers, uh, there's nothing really related to extroversion and introversion at all here. Because both of them could be, it's just maybe somebody who is introverted has a little bit more time to think. Uh, and the introverts, uh, sorry, the extroverts maybe just have to put a little effort, but I don't think there'd be any relation to that. And the agreeableness is very interesting. I think the people who are disagreeable, they tend to be suspicious and tend to check things, but also they just don't go along with the flow so they can test things that the people who are agreeable and avoid conflict uh, might um, not make wise decisions well the other ones also because they're driven by the ego and so on but you know the reason here you can be just um, you know uh, not make uh, rational decisions because you're avoid conflict the same as neuroticism I think definitely people who are high on neuroticism are you know it's just a little bit harder for them not to make uh, decisions on on some uh, anxious impulse so it doesn't mean that we can't it just means that there is a little bit of variation among people back to uh, this as i said i think it's all very neat that we have 16 boxes in mbti system but i don't think that's true i've just taken a test recently and i'm telling you i think it's just bunch of nonsense yeah but it's nice i think uh you know five personality traits is much better descriptor so things even the five uh personality traits is not a truly accurate description of who, who you are it's not true what is then you know tr the true is that you know um you could say and there's actually many 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 described descriptions of where you know what the human thinking is and sometimes they were quite ridiculous i didn't really like to show all of them you know you know uh, this type of intelligence that type of intelligence what i would probably say is that you know you could combine the two possible thinking type you know you you know maybe somebody who is more abstract word oriented and uh you be more consciously aware of it and um you know 
It's very much detail, analysis, relying on senses and memory and, 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 and logical thinking. But there's also an image thinking. This is what we call intuition in the past, but actually uh, that is also part of um, cognition, right? So the critical thinking does, I mean, beyond logic does take into account of all of them. And you can call the left one critical or the right one creative or analytical. And I think both of them, you know, uh, are part of human cognition. So I don't think you can separate one from the other. It's just the left is something that describes uh, the right. The right can describe, the right can cognate. So that's how I see differences. So I, I call, I mean, you know, yes, you know, it's probably critical thinking, important, but also the um, cognition and sensing together. So, the, the, you know, I don't think you, you would be able to uh, live without the other. And it's, it's really nice here on the, on, on the right scheme, whether, you know, analytical thinking, which is logical, rational, focused on objective, whereas the creative thinking is uh, imagination, intuition, emotion, and it's objective, but it could be checked with the analytical thinking. So, you know, they're not separate. They're not fighting, they are together. Now, uh, back to the personality type. It doesn't really matter if MBTI is a big five. When you describe it, you're describing a top of an iceberg. Really, you're describing a top of an iceberg. I mean, it's describing uh, you can cognate yourself. You'd also uh, obviously have some, you probably don't know yourself. I'm sure you don't really know others. So whatever you do, the you know, and 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 trying to analyze others, you will only get the half, the top half, and that's how the human behavior is expressed at the bottom. And I'm not going to be uh, calling it. Oh, I'm not a psychologist, so I'm just going to call this whatever. But it's the self, it's a self ego, the unconscious animus, and this is complex. Jungian stuff I'm not going to talk about, but it's really difficult to uh, to describe what's actually in your unconscious. That's why uh, you know people's feeble attempts to do it uh, usually end up in failure when they try to categorize things in little boxes. Just uh, a really nice image of an iceberg. You know what's on top is a little bit that you people see. What's bottom? people don't see, you don't know, maybe you'll work with psychologists to find out. And I call it hidden thinking. So there's an outward, you know, you can critical or creative, you do stuff, but there is a lot of this unconscious thinking that is happening. And this is what we call biases sometimes, yeah? And we all come from certain places. These places could be expressed on top in your preferences, but also hidden inside of your very psyche. And when we uh, do tend to cognate, analyze, think how to be, behave, it's all subjective and it's all down in the hidden thinking. So there's nothing called objective thinking. It's just our attempt to uh, categorize. Just like we try to categorize things, we also need to be able to approach something which is relatively analytical so that we can describe it because without words and description we're lost again all personality two types can generate ideas and be both creative and critical thinking so you know all of the human types can do this right all the personality traits are conducive to it it's just that it's a little bit harder to do some of these things for others so critical thinking when you post consider perspective Determine causes, predict effects, uh, you know, basically your scientific method, right? Uh, definitely looking for proof. That is very much critical. I mean, you could say, well, it's blue activity or, you know, but, you know, it's just how some people do it more naturally and others have to say, I'm, you know, say, was it natural to me? No, I, I probably not, but it doesn't really matter. We, we all do that. And then the creative thinking, same way and uh, we generate ideas. And, you know, it's it's really nice Venn diagram here when they kind of correlate, you know, coincide in some places. Some 
some of the examples could be out there in the if I'm a yellow type. And I don't really need to uh, subject it to critical thinking. Maybe I, maybe I do, but you know, sometimes when they, uh, the ideas are generated, uh, then they have to be scrutinized. And so you, you create idea about a new product and how the, uh, you know, I don't know, or uh, if, if you're in business or how the, you know, uh, new gravity, you know, uh, gravity will work like or Einstein about the theory of relativity first, you just envision it in your head, but then the critical thinking starts to take it apart and you do the uh, judging of the idea. So I like this generating ideas as critical thinking, and sorry, creative thinking and judging ideas as critical thinking. Kind of the same picture here, uh, you know, what's required for creative thinking, curiosity, openness. Hey, so the trait of openness uh, will be uh, in, you know, the people who are high on openness are really good creative thinking, reasoning by metaphor and analogy, you know, invention, imagination, being playful. So again, open and a little bit less, probably less organized would help you be creative. And uh, doesn't mean that every, every disorganized person is creative. And in critical thinking, you know, it will be a description, interpretation, analysis. For people who categorize, classify, evaluate, and assess, so blue types, you know, conscientious people. And uh, reasoning through logic, as we described. And then in the middle, when you get to the synthesis and combination elaboration, that is where the creative and, and, and critical thinking coincide. And the people who are best capable of doing both are the best in excelling, you know, advancing forward. And there's no single human type can do that, but I think it just, you know, we're all a mix of them. And just like that, we're all a mix of creative and critical. Not all people are good creative, critical thinkers. Not all people good critical thinking thinkers, yeah. And not, not many people are good creative thinkers. You know, and I think they may be just, you know, some of them are on the edges, but again, the best and things happen when two things combine. So developing the 21st century critical thinkers is an, a task of innovation. And, you know, as you see, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff happening around the world, you know, a lot of you know, ideas, a lot of ideas floating out there how to you know uh, be there you obviously have to be open-minded uh you but you also have to be in you know good problem solver you have to be able to analyze reason and evaluate and but you also have to collaborate with others because you're not alone now Sam. it's like really complex you also have to reflect on learning think uh, both critically and creatively and communications have to be accurate so you know, that's actually a brilliant picture of a mind that is very, very, very versatile. Open, versatile, and uh, and also organized too. It's not a single human being that can do that. You know, teams do it uh, effectively. And I will talk about this later on how, you know, maybe how to do critical thinking in, in team environment. But, um, I would say that at this one, and I'm, I will probably think about this uh, uh, particular vision of how to develop critical thinking later on uh, in other series, unless you tell me that you want some other uh, subject to uh, uh, cover. But I think we'll, on, we'll end up there. So again, to summarize, uh, humors, you know, that's the old idea. MBTI testing, probably not right, but it's really fun and people will continue doing this. Uh, five uh, personality traits is better description, but all of these are just the tip of the iceberg and what you have inside of you is really complex. And, uh, but we need to be both critical thinkers and creative thinkers to be successful in the future. Thank you and I hope to see you soon. Bye.